Hello, everybody. I see you haven't had enough biopolymer, so you bring, so we bring you more. I'm Andrew. I'm Kazuki. I'm Adam. So basically, uh, ours is on biopolymers. As you can see, uh, wait, what is the laser? So as you can see, in this first one, there's a cake. And the second part of it, there's somebody, he's dumping a strawberries onto him, make a happy birthday, uh, spell it out, of strawberries. And this is uh, like how it comes out. There's 50 strawberries, which is like represented by that. Then a healthy person, which is represented by the word healthy up there, comes along. <laughs> and they want to make it more healthy. So they first start off by heating up the strawberries and it ends up with like 10 at first. And then when it gets to zero, there's just a dried cherry layer on top. And then they're like, oh, I just want to put cherries on now. So what they do, they put on the cherries instead. So that instead of having the strawberries, so they put it on there. And then at this point, what they do, they take this tool and they're able to take off the icing layer. So then this is the final cake with the cherries on top. And then there's also, there's the cake layer. Then a uh, child comes along and you can see that because it says child right here. And they come, they try to put raspberries on, but they only like make one and a lot of them just miss. And then after this, after uh, the cake is done now, so it's put into an oven, and it's uh, put for 30 minutes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit so that the salmonella will be broken up and destroyed. Okay, okay so uh, in our experiment, what we did is, uh, so we took iota kerogene and mixed it with calcium ions. So calcium ions have a positive charge, and iota kerogene has sulfate groups, which have a negative charge. So that is why those two attract and form a gel. So the forming of a gel is represented uh, here. So what happens when the strawberries are put into the icing is that the strawberries and the icing kind of like form a bond. And when this person tries to take out the strawberries, he gets some icing that is connected to the strawberry. So that represents how the bond is formed between uh, the strawberries and the icing. Okay, so another factor that uh, we learned about biopolymers is that uh, when we put in calcium, the iota kerogene could form bonds uh, much faster and easily. So. Uh, normally, without the strawberries, the cake would take time to, uh, the icing on the top of the cake would take time to uh, bond together. But once the strawberries were added, uh, it was easier for the icing to form a concrete shape. Uh, so that created this happy birthday shape that came off after the strawberries were taken off. Another f uh, thing we learned about biopolymers is that enzymes can break down specific gels. So uh, the enzyme in this case is this tool that the person is using to take off the icing layer. So the tool represents the enzyme because it is breaking down the icing layer and it is leaving the dried cherries and the cake layer. And this also uh, represents how enzymes can only target specific things because the tool only took off the icing layer and not the dried cherries. So you can tell that the uh, tool was only fit to take off the icing. Another thing that affects uh, biopolymers is that certain uh, biopolymers work better with uh, certain ions. And in this case, when the child tried to put on raspberries, the raspberries couldn't form a good connection with the icing, which is why they fell off. But in the case of strawberries and cherries, they were able to connect easily with the icing. And uh, the last concept that is represented in this drawing is uh, how heating a biopolymer affects its structure. So when the cake was put into the oven uh, right here, the salmonella evaporated. Uh, so that represents how heating a biopolymer can break it down, and that is what released the uh, salmonella in this drawing. 
Okay, sorry about the slight confusion with releasing Samuna. We meant to break it down. But further on, we have extensively analyzed this comic. And by a little bit confusing, we appreciate the artist's ability to connect common cooking with the scientific topic of biopolymers. And furthermore, we see much more potential in this. Starting with the first slide, we see that they have the layers over here. We believe it may be easier if we were to perhaps add some d details to these layers, such as a sort of wavy pattern to the top icing layer, or perhaps shading the cherries over here, so to distinct them better. And they do show the heating process in the first panel. However, they do not show a cooling process. So we believe they could add on maybe two more to show it cooling and sort of settling in its final shape. And in the second and third one, we did mention how calcium, in this case strawberries, helps bonds form faster and stronger. Since there's no like other comparison, we were thinking maybe use another fruit or maybe less of the fruit to represent that this over here is faster than if you were to use something else. Furthermore, in the fourth slide over here where he's taking off the strawberries, it could be made a little bit more clear if they were to add like past outlines of where the strawberries were. And next we have, you can see that we have happy B day, happy birthday, and back to happy B day. We were thinking maybe keep a little more consistency because it can get confusing at times, you know. And I'm not one to say with my art abilities, but maybe label this as a tool just in case, you know. And almost there. <laughs> We have a couple point of view things over here. I don't know if you want to put that there. A little bit confusing at times. And that about settles it. Thank you. Okay, so two things. I just, I think that this is a perfect example of the fact that a scientist can explain anything. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to have you guys explain this again, but I'm going to have you explain it as a different experiment. <laughs> so try viewing this as photolithography and seeing what you can do. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure this was Ron is photolithography. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so uh, <laughs> we didn't notice that this right here is supposed to be a template, I guess, to put in the strawberries. So that represents the mask in photolithography where you put the mask on the uh, object you're uh, changing. So that's the mask, and you put the strawberries in, which represents the UV light, which goes through the mask to uh, uh, to to create the pattern. And uh, after that, uh, let's see. So right here, when they're uh, taking off the uh, strawberries, it represents the process of etching where they uh, take the strawberries off so that the pattern is inscribed at the bottom, which is represented here. Oh, and then uh, at the end, they also etch the icing layer on top, which represents the photo resist that is taken off at the end uh, when the pattern is finished, kind of, yeah. Yeah, and then what do you end up with? You end up with uh, the happy birthday pattern, which used cherries, which was represented by cherries. At the end. So you end up with a pattern that was created, but then I guess is transferred to something else. 
And then the very end, what is the the salmonella the 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 last panel what it might it be capturing? that is important for doing photolithography. Well, the final step to get rid of salmonella appears to be like getting rid of bacteria because bacteria, dust, even fingerprints can all cause huge errors when doing this sort of process. Yeah, so it's the idea of using a clean room or making a clean environment as a, to make less errors in the process. Okay, so that was a good job of on-the-fly <laughs> reinterpretation, but I think it's a little easier to explain this way. Okay, do we have any questions? I know you guys are doing it on the fly, so don't worry if what you say is perfect. Just, you know, go for sort of a discussion. We, we understand. It doesn't need to be a perfect, just, uh, just uh, start your thoughts. So we don't quite remember the process that happens before etching. So that's okay, any pieces Which of it we believe is the process that is happening here. Okay, well then just explain the other ones. Okay. Don't focus on the one piece you don't know, focus on all the pieces you do know. <laughs> so this is the masking, they're putting the strawberries on, or okay, first here uh, they're creating the uh, icing uh, in the oven which is like uh, when you spin the photoresistant on the uh, s substrate you're trying to create. Uh, so that is represented by the icing here in the oven. And then this is the masking phase. And then this is the about, I think this is masking and and this is development. I'm not sure. You can skip you, some and just go on. I feel like this is etching because you're taking the photoresistant off, which is basically the icing layer that was or originally on the cake. Well, actually, I think the, the label there, sorry says icing layer. What's on top of the icing layer? What are you actually taking off? Or, sorry, you're, I guess you're taking off part of the icing layer. And then, the last one. It's not necessarily a piece of the standard process. What are they actually doing in the end? Oh, so the last step would be the cleaning because they're putting the cake into the oven so that they're able to clean out all the like, bacteria and salmonella. 
but they're also utilizing the pattern. So they're using, I think they're using the icing pattern to attach other things. Okay, so can our artists stand up? Okay. And, um, <laughs> <laughs>